Hi, my name is John. I'm born in Mexico. I grew up in Mexico. As a child, I was sexually molested, and that lasted throughout my childhood. I remember I was eight years old when my dad took me to church for the first time on a Christmas morning. And the pastor was talking about this Jesus, how he came to earth to judge us for our sins. And that Jesus had this big whip that for every sin we will do, we will get a whip. And we were singing a song, but this God, how, how mad God was at us. At the age of 22, I got married to my wonderful wife. We moved to Canada. We have five kids and we went to a church that believed in salvation. They didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. They didn't believe in the book of Acts, the gift of the Spirit. But they believed in salvation. In 1996, I was convicted. And I went to my pastor's house and he prayed over me. He led me to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus. I accepted Jesus. That was 1996 in June. I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. I remember leaving the pastor's house, how I felt, how good I felt, how free I felt but my childhood was always haunting me. And from that day on, God kept nudging us, go back to Mexico, to your own people. Bring the gospel back to your people. In 2007, my wife and I, we sold everything we had in Canada, packed our family, moved to Mexico. We started a small school. We had 13, 13 kids to begin with. And we start ministering to these kids and these kids would give their, accept Jesus as their savior. And these kids would go home to their parents and tell their parents about Jesus and the parents wouldn't believe it and the kids would read out of their own Bible that Jesus came to save. And these, these parents would give their life to Jesus. And we saw revival. But the church got so mad, 2012, they excommunicated me out of their church in order to stop the school. But that made the school grow faster yet. That very same year, 2012, on November the 10th, that church paid the cartels $10,000 to kidnap me and kill me. At 7.30 in the evening, these cartels came and they picked me up, handcuffed me, threw me in the back of their pickup truck. And that deep peace was over me. There was no, I was not afraid of anything. I kept telling him, Jesus, here I come. And I was thinking, this is the day I'm going to meet Jesus. And when they stopped the pickup truck and they got me out of the pickup truck, I was in front of these big machine guns and Jesus stood right between us and he touched me on both of my shoulders. And he says, an audible voice says, John, I've got this. And I says, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. And these guys says, you're crazy. Nobody's ever stood up in front of these machine guns and has smiled. And they dropped me off that very same night. 5.30 in the morning, I came home. And it was not normal from in Mexico. If you get kidnapped, you're dead. And I was alive. And we started one church and we started the second church and, we, and I kept teaching. The book of Acts was for, for the apostles. It's no longer for us. In 2019, I was in the mountain. I was up in the mountain and I was praying for revival. And I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me, John, the book of Acts is for you. The gifts of the Spirit, they are for you. They are for you today. And we found a church that believed in the gifts of the Spirit. And I started studying in my Bible. I just had a different Bible. It was talking to me all over the place. But this childhood thing was still haunting me. This one, one day I was listening to a minister, Andrew Womack, and he talked about deliverance. And at the end of that teaching, he gave a prayer line number that I could, I, people could call. I typed in that number and I saved that number and I called that prayer line. I told this minister, hey, I have demons. He says, how do you know you have demons? Well, I told him about my child and he says, yes, you have demons. And he started praying over me and it felt like he was ripping my heart out. Like the next thing I knew, I was looking for my phone. I couldn't find my phone. I, I don't remember what all happened. Well, when I found my phone, I says, hey, are you still there? And he says, yes, I'm still here. He says, what happened? I said, I have no idea. And he says, well, what, 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 what's going on? I says, I feel so light. I says, I feel so good. And he started ministering with the Holy Spirit to me. I got a phone call 
to go do some deliverance and was seven hours away from home and I called my mentor, spiritual mentor and he called my pastor and they both came over and they prayed over me and they, and they sent me out. I called my wife and it says they're coming and you can you have a ride. There's a seat in the plane, they, they rented a small plane. And the next morning, it was Tuesday morning, they got into a plane and as this plane took off, shortly after takeoff, the cartels brought the plane down and they crashed and everybody was killed on the plane. A friend of mine drove me back to the funeral. When we got to the funeral home, I asked the funeral director, I says, where's my wife? He says, we can't show her to you. I says, in the name of Jesus, I will bring every door down in this house until I find my wife. And I start kicking the doors with my foot. I was so angry. And he led me into the room and he says, then that bag is your wife. And I opened that bag. I grabbed my wife by the hand and I says, Esther, have you changed your mind? I'm just checking. She opened her left eye halfways and turned her head away from me. She says, I'm so sorry, Esther. I'm gonna let you go. And I said my goodbyes and I let her go. And after the funeral, my sons took me to Canada. This grieving period is the toughest lot time of journey in my life. God has sent many people in my life that helped me through this grieving journey. I started listening to Pastor Vlad and Hungry Jan, and a ministry started in Canada, and I was copying Pastor Vlad's messages, and I was preaching them in German. In 2022, I saw a link to sign up for a Pastor Summit at Hungry Jan. I signed up, and I came. I talked to Pastor Vlad and he invited me to come to the intern trip at Hungry, Hungry Jan. I went back home. I couldn't see this, this possible, but I signed up and I'm so thankful that I've been able to come to this intern trip. It has changed my life. It's been a life changer for me. My life will never be the same. I'm so thankful for that God has sent great people into my life to help me through this grieving journey. Although all those mistakes I've, been, I've made, I've received forgiveness from them. I re receive deliverance from them. And if you're watching this and you don't know this Jesus, I really encourage you, give your life to this Jesus. There's nothing too big in your life that Jesus hasn't paid for already. Jesus has paid for all of your sins already. I would like to pray for you. If you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior, I, I, I want you to, to repeat after me. Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me for all of my sin. Jesus, I accept you as my personal savior in my heart today. Thank you, Jesus.